Hello, you're watching New Vision TV News. I am Ruth in Nasaji. Now, before we get into today's business, I want to put up a quick reminder that the Harvest Money Expo is on this year. It will start on the 13th of February and end on 17th February. It will take place at Nambola Stadium and the entrance fee is 10,000 shillings. For those who would love to attend training sessions, each will be 10,000 shillings. The theme for this year's Harvest Money Expo is farming as a business. Moving on, now the Uganda Tourism Board recently got a new executive director. Lily Ajarova, who was the executive director of the Chimpanzee Sanctuary and Wildlife Conservation Trust, replaced Stephen Asimwe. New Vision TV's Jela Tenya had a discussion on her plans. My name is Lily Ajarova and I will be taking on the leadership of Uganda Tourism Board as the Chief Executive Officer. I'm very excited about this position. Ajarova took over office early this year. She believes Uganda has all it takes to become the world's number one tourism destination. This is no doubt since it was crowned the Pearl of Africa. From the hills to the mountains, the rivers, the lakes, the abundance in wildlife, among so much is the reason why Uganda should take the lead in showcasing the beauty of nature. However, Jarva says this is hindered by Uganda's lack of a clear identity. We have a challenge right now in terms of having no a national brand identity. Power of Africa is our brand which is not really properly used. And I hope that as soon as I take on the office, I, it will be one of the priority things to settle. Having a, brand, a national brand identity is very key if we have to market Uganda as the key destination for tourists. And uh, we have a challenge of budget as well. Uh, the tourism industry is one of the key sectors that is bringing in foreign exchange for this country. But the investment that is being put in the, in the industry is still very little. I hope that we will be able to convince the government to increase on the investment that is required for this industry. For the world to embrace and love Uganda for its enduring beauty, various stakeholders who can champion the same cause need to be brought on board, something Ajarova agrees with. Uganda is blessed with uh, lots of natural resources, the wildlife, we have the national parks that are being managed very well and we need to make use of this opportunity to market more the diversity of the wildlife that we have beyond what is being done right now, but also to market, to develop and market other tourism products that we have. Culture, we have diversity of culture. We need to develop the, the cultural product. We have the source of the Nile in itself. We have the landscape, so you have the equator, you have the source of the Nile, we have, you know, sports, we have, you know, the entertainment, you know, that we offer in, in Uganda is something that would appeal to so many international. Tourism can change the economy drastically if more investment is put into it and the investment is properly managed. It is almost a month since Ajarova assumed office. The country awaits implementation of her brilliant mind on boosting Uganda's tourism. Before assuming office as the chief executive office of Uganda Tourism Board, Ajarova was the executive director of the Chimpanza Sanctuary and Wildlife Conservation Trust. She replaced Stephen Asimwe, who resigned to pursue further studies. Ajarova 
is deputized by Ocheng Bradford, who replaced John Sempewa. For a meantime, visit our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug forward slash Pearl of Africa to get the feel of Uganda's beauty and buy a copy of the Sunday Vision for a Pearl of Africa dose. I am Ruthie Naseje and Gerald Tenua for New Vision TV. Moving on, the police in Buvuma district are holding five suspects following a letter containing the assassination threats to Buvuma district member of parliament, Robert Migade Nduga and Busam. Busamuzi sub-county chairperson Charles Ayisu now says he were a region police spokesperson Helen Butoto identify the suspects as Ibrahim Ocheng and Ismail Nawede who are border border riders. Now Livingstone Maker and Stephen Musene and Kulia are also among the suspects. Butoto say the suspects are being investigated on the charges of terrorism. She said that their arrest came after an anonymous letter from the alleged dark killers was delivered to the Vuma District Internal Security Officer's Office with information of plotted assassination threats to Migade and Ayiso on January 17th. According to the Seswa uh, PRO, they have so far recorded statements from the suspects and they are yet to record the legislators and the sub-county chairman's statements. And news from the Forum for Democratic Change, Party President Amoriat. Now he said that they have well laid out strategies to ensure that the ruling National Resistance Movement Party relinquishes power before their 2021. Amoriat made the remarks yesterday while addressing party delegates at Mother Kevin Community Center in Kampala. He said the party had discovered that President Jerome Museveni would be declared winner again in case they went to the polls in 2021. Amoriat urged FDC supporters to turn up in big numbers whenever they are called upon. In our sports news, the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, which will take place in Egypt between June and July, will, has been pushed back by a week to cater for the holy month of Ramadan. Now, the tournament chief told RFP News on Sunday, the four-week-long event will now run from June 21st to July 19th instead of July 15th and July 13th. Now, the former player who has been handed the task of supervising the continental showpiece by the Egyptian Football Association is Mohamed Fadil. The decision was taken following requests from the Maghreb countries of Morocco, Tunisia and Algeria who want their players to have time to rest after the end of Ramadan. Ramadan in which Muslims abstain from food and water from sunrise to sunset will this year be observed from the start of May until the beginning of June. Let's close off the bulletin with our daily pal of Africa series and this is going to come from Lukaya. Now Lukaya is one of the municipalities in the Kalungu district of the central region of Uganda. Lukaya is on the Masaka Kampala Highway close to the shores of Lake Victoria and just south of the equator. This town is a great advantage to travelers who make stopovers to grab eatables to accompany them through the rest of the journey. Let's take a look. Lukaya is a rather semi-developed town. Located in central Uganda in Kalungu district, Lukaya has become a main stop by long-distance travelers who explore Uganda. The travelers enjoy the chicken roasted along the road, gonja and also a few drinks they grab to accompany their food. This is clearly represented here.
Getting to Lukaya, which is on the Masaka Kampala Highway, is approximately 103 kilometers by road, southwest of Kampala, Uganda's capital city. This town's infrastructure is in good shape, therefore easing transportation of goods and services. Now from Apollo of Africa Stories, visit our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug. Our newspaper, The Sun Division, is also the home of adventures. So grab your copy every Sunday for Pal of Africa Stories. And that's all we had for you. Thank you for watching. Be sure to catch more news updates and other programs here on New Vision TV by visiting our website, which is www.newvision.co.ug forward slash video. You can also follow us on social media. Facebook is The New Vision. Twitter is at New Vision Wire. Instagram is at New Vision Wire. And our YouTube channel is New Vision TV. Follow up with me on my Twitter handle. I am worth the, the voice now and to remind you the harvest one expo will start on the 13th of february and end on 17th of february at Nambole Stadium. Entrance fee is 10,000 shillings and the theme for this year's harvest money expo is farming as a business. Thank you for watching.